This is Deli Alley on the 21st of December 2022. Besiktas are 2-0 down at home to second division side San Luis Fasbor. I definitely butchered that name. And Deli Alley gets subbed off in the 29th minute. And this was the reaction. Now, it is not the first time, and it will definitely not be the last time, that we've seen a talent in world football have the entire world at his feet and doesn't seem to capitalise on his opportunities. If it was due to all or nothing Tottenham Hotspur, Jose Mourinho or Fortnite, something has drastically gone wrong for Delhi Ali's career to go the way that it has. And the way it's currently going, Delhi Ali could be out of football by the age of 30. Join me as today we go through the tragic tale of Delhi Ali. Tell me down below in the comments your thoughts about Delhi Ali and what do you think has gone wrong. And if you're new here, feel free to also subscribe and let's try and hit 1,500 likes. And let's get straight into it. Cheapest and most reliable coins on FIFA 23, then go down below to use them and buy top link in the description and make sure to use code VISA for 5% off. But of course, with any story, you've always got to go back to the start. Deli Ali, of course, made a name for himself back at MK Dons, and you all should know the story. 2014, 2015, Deli Ali, at the age of 18, was making a name for himself in League One, becoming one of the hottest English young talents out there at this current moment in time. In his last year for MK Dons, scoring 16 goals, and he was only 18. His exact role in the team was quite confusing because people would say that he was a pure number 10 and a cam, or people say that he was a second striker. Purely up purely up there on the pitch to support the main striker that they can flick on and he can catch on to any second balls and take advantage. This position is neither a true forward or a true midfielder. And the problem is with this second striker role is that you don't really see this role being used too often in football in the modern era. This position is slowly going out of date and this will be a common trend as we get into it. Of course, with his great success at MK Dons, a move to a big club in the Premier League was, of course, going to be inevitable. And it was not surprising that Tottenham Hotspur came in and signed him back in 15-16. First season, 10 goals, 9 assists at the age of 19 and with some amazing performances that year as well and some great moments. Of course, how I can forget Dele Alli's goal against Palace in his first season in Premier League. <laughs> In this system, he played more as a left attacking midfielder with Christian Eriksen as the pure number 10 with Eric Lamella as a right attacking midfielder as well. And in 16-17, he got even better with 18 goals and 7 assists, going brace after brace after brace and even winning the Young Player of the Year award in the Premier League as well. He even became captain of Tottenham Hotspur at the age of 21. He was on top of the world, being a part of the England setup, scoring a banger against France as well, as you may remember. Every single thing that could go to plan has gone to plan. And then something happened. So what happened to Deli Alley? Well, Fortnite. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. But it could be actually Fortnite. In the 2017-18 season, Deli Alley had a respectable season with 9 goals and 10 assists. It is a drop off from his previous years, however, it's not too far of a drop off that is really concerning. The next year though, becomes more concerning. A few injuries played him, but with 25 games in the Premier League, he had five goals and three assists. And all I'm gonna say is that what happened in 2018, Fortnite. I don't wanna pay too much attention to Fortnite here, but I will highlight the fact that at this time in his career, he was streaming on Twitch.tv, playing Fortnite on a regular basis. This was confirmed that he played games quite a lot, that two years later, he became a part of an esports brand called Excel. Throughout my life, I've always fought to be better. Dealing with opponents, protecting my honor, challenging any team. I love this game. I love the battle. Happy to tackle any opponent I face. This is my release, my passion. My escape. He was named the first global ambassador for Excel Esports and did many live streams for playing games. Saying on his BBC interview that it's because of my love of games of why I became a, a global ambassador for an esports team. Now, of course, that's not to say that you can't 
play video games and also be a, fo a pro footballer. I know many footballers that play Warzone on a regular basis and still plays football. It's not really a rare thing. But I just want to highlight this. Alongside this, onto the real topic here. At the start of 2019, Deli Ali picked up a hamstring injury, which meant that he was pretty much out for the rest of the season. And even at the start of the 1920 season, of course, during the time period, a certain man called Mauricio Pochettino lost his job at Tottenham Hotspur. And the main reason why Dele Alli did so well was due to Poch's system. And maybe it was also the sense of togetherness, love, loyalty, the, the feeling that you get from manager that he feels like he has his full faith in you. That may mean a lot to certain players more than others. And it felt like Dele Alli loves the feeling of being loved because that really gets his confidence up and therefore he could play at his very best. And the person to replace Poch is potentially the absolute opposite of that. And that is, of course, Jose Mourinho. So Deli Alli just came from a pretty okay season, then has a hamstring injury, and he's kind of off and on for the rest of the season. And then the new season comes, his manager that he's had for many years leaves, and then here comes this new guy, and I say new guy, it's Jose Mourinho, who is on his case immediately. Due to the same time, Here's the all nothing Amazon documentary. So he's already at a bit of a very important part of his career. A lot of pressure is on him from the fans. And now you've got a worldwide documentary series now highlighting every move that he makes and including that every mistake. And this is when we see the famous Jaws and Mourinho Deli Alley conversation. And I feel like at this certain time of his career, this was the worst possible thing. At such a young age, when you're going through a bit of a dip, the worst thing you want is more and more people kind of prodding at you and getting involved in your business, when in reality, you should just focus on yourself and your football. And it is easier said than done. And I think this was the moment that really did not help him. And in my opinion, I feel bad for him because I feel like this wasn't his fault. The documentary wasn't his fault. Posh being sat and Marino coming in wasn't his fault. The hamstring wasn't his fault. I feel like this was really bad for him. Because at the end of the day, when it comes to being a footballer, confidence is everything. We already went through Jadon Sancho a couple of days ago with how important confidence is for a footballer. It is literally everything. So I feel like this really hits him hard. And what may happen when you're getting hit hard with confidence and you're not enjoying your football, you have your eyes on different little aspects of your life, such as becoming a global ambassador for a gaming esports team. And God knows what else he could be doing as well behind the scenes that will distract him from focusing on his game. But of course, this is not to say that he shouldn't hold any criticism. Of course, Charles and Mourinho was saying that he believes that he's pretty at training and that is a famous clip that he believes that Daily Alley is lazy during training and that is one typical trait that a lot of people seems to attach to Daily Alley the fact that he's quite lazy and doesn't take his training seriously and I guess as well doesn't take his football seriously. So in fairness to Jose Mourinho, you could say that he tried his best to really hit home to Deli Alley in the only way that he could possibly know and that is to give him the cold honest truth. And Looking back on that conversation, he is speaking the truth to him. It was very obvious from minute one that a lot of attention was for Jaws and Munoz to get the best out of Deli Alley. But very soon, it was found out that he was not too keen on him. Jaws and Mourinho drops Deli Alley from the Europa League. Jaws and Mourinho would publicly berate him on live interviews, saying that he doesn't train hard enough and that in front of his own teammates as well during training, saying that he doesn't run and sprint as much as his other teammates. And this is a difference and the importance of mentality but also player management for some players that would fire them up and get them thinking you know what I'm gonna show you I'm gonna show you okay what I can do and try to prove them wrong but for some players that would make them think well why am I gonna work hard for you then if you've already given up on me and I feel like Deli Ali took that route and then snowfall from all of that Deli Ali gets took out of the England team and then is a bench player essentially for the Spurs team as well everything is going down very fast for Deli Alley. And in that 2021 season, Deli Alley, who previous years were the main man in the lineup alongside Harry Kane, started seven games, got zero goals, and got one assist, becoming just purely a bench player. Of course, at this time, it was clear that he has to get a new lease of life. He has to move on and try to find somewhere else. So in the 21-22 season, halfway through at Spurs, he was purely a bench player and got subbed on in games. It wasn't working out for him. So, of course, who came knocking? Everton. 
and Frank Lampard. When Dele Alli left Tottenham, he got a big farewell from the Spurs fans. They still loved him despite his poor form and his poor performances in the last two years. They know how much that he needs the love of the fans and I do respect Spurs fans for really getting behind him at this moment in his career. The move came. Everton, Frank Lampard, Premier League Hall of Fame midfielder, a very similar type of player that Dele Alli was. He could understand what Dele Alli would need to help the team and to get back to his old self. He's been there, he's done that. Surely this was the perfect move for him. Dele Alli started one game for Everton in Premier League and that was the last game of the season when they were already safe. He was purely a bench player and in the games that he did get brought on, zero goals, zero assists. In fairness, he didn't get started, he didn't really get given a chance to really show what he can do, but in training, perhaps he didn't deserve the chance. A different break, in a completely different culture. So, he went to Besiktas. Here we go now, he's at Besiktas, he's in a brand new league, brand new culture, brand new everything, okay? He's adored by the fans instantly, the fans love him, they are surrounding the streets of Istanbul just for his name, cheering his name immediately, a big name who believe that there's still talent in there to get him back to what he used to be. He's still quite young. He's only 25. He's still quite young. This is a moment for him. Get to the task and pick up some form. In a league which isn't the greatest, this is perfect for Dele Alli. And um, he started seven times in the league with one goal. Uh, and that leads us back to where we first started with him being booed by the Basitas fans for being 2-0 down to a second tier side. It is a real shame because he's literally only 26 right now. What do you think will happen to Daily Alley? Do you think that he may get a move to America in the MLS and maybe have one final payday over there and then end his career? Or do you think that he can get to another club and maybe reinvigorate himself? What do you think is the problem? Do you think that it's himself and his personality? Do you think that other aspects of his management? Tell me your thoughts down below in the comments. And this is the tragic tale of Deadly Alley. And I really hope that he can find himself somewhere very soon. I wish you best of luck, pal. I doubt he's watching this.